Hello dear friends, welcome to Dr. Rajesh Verma's YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be discussing Thurston theory of intelligence. So, we had discussed in previous videos the nature of intelligence, meaning of intelligence, definition, its characteristics and Spearman theory of intelligence. So, uh, uh, in subsequent videos, we'll be discussing more theories. But particularly today, we'll be talking about the Thurston, Alan Thurston's theory of intelligence. So uh, before uh, starting the theory, let us go for a brief introduction about the great psychologist, American psychologist, rather I say, Alan Louis Leon Thurston, 1887-1955. Why he has been uh, designated as a great psychologist? Because he has various credits to his himself regarding psychology. He was instrumental in the development of psychometrics, though the base was started by the Charles P. Mann, but he developed it to a new level. He, uh, what do you know, uh, psychometrics, the science that assesses mental functions and improved. Uh, sorry, that is the mental functions or you say uh, measuring or assessing the psychological ability. That comes under the purview of psychology, uh, psychometrics. Further, the, one of the best technique of data analysis we call as a factor analysis or dimensional reduction technique that was introduced by the Charles Piemann. He, means Alan Thurston, improved the factor uh, analysis at a and took him that in a strategical technique to a new heights. He developed Thurston scale, a tool to measure attitude. So it's a, and still today we use that scale. You can understand the relevancy and standard uh, validity, reliability of the scale. He was trained earlier, he was trained as a mechanical engineer, as Charles Spieber. But Later, and uh, see, interestingly, he worked with Thomas Alva Edison. Means he, uh, by birth or by nature, he was prodigy, prodigy, and uh, by birth he was a genius. The only people who has a high level of intelligence and high level of uh, scientific at aptitude, they only work with Thomas Alva Edison. So you can understand his uh, intellectual level if he had worked with him. So, but later he switched to psychology and subsequently earned his PhD in 1970. This is the image in front of you. Uh, it's not in anything museum or anything else. It's the Alan Thurston Psychometric Laboratory at University of North Carolina. He established this university. His work on factor analysis led him to develop theory of mental uh, intelligence, which he called several primary mental abilities. And uh, through that technique, he reduced the psychological or intelligence dimensions to seven primary mental capacities. He rejected the idea that any one factor, particularly focusing on the Charles Piemann, any one factor had more general application than other and developed the primary mental abilities test in 1938, which measured components of human intelligence. So, dear friends, this was a brief introduction of Alan Thurston. So, who are psychological enthusiasts or psychology teachers or students, they must study the biography or autobiography of these great psychologists who contributed uh, much more and uh, establish the field of psychology as a pure science. So we must go through these uh, biographies, autobiographies of these uh, psychologists. So in that view, I just explained a little bit of uh, crisp uh, ideas or notes about him in this video. Now let us move to him, his theory of intelligence. In this, he proposed the theory of primary mental abilities, which I told you, is the theory states that Intelligence consists of seven abilities, which he termed as primary. And 
these abilities works as functional unity functional unity means they act as a one unit separate separate units and the intelligence is the combined effort or sum total of these primary mental abilities they are purely not purely relatively independent to each other means each primary mental ability or capacity is independent to each other but they work together and produce the results or when you perform something these mental abilities though they are relatively independent of each other but they interact with each other and helps in the outcome now the point comes how an individual is a great musician he is good at playing various instruments but is poor at writing the thurston said that due to the predominance of musical primary ability he though he has the ability of writing but the predominance is of musical ability that's why that individual is great musician so getting my point this is what i want to say means we have the seven primary cognitive capacities mental abilities you call them and these together makes up the intelligence now the question comes the point is come, what are these primary mental ability now let us it, these are in front of you the first one is verbal comprehension verbal means you know, the ability of grasping meaning of words concepts and ideas whatever ideas you have whatever the meaning of words you able to grasp or formation of various concepts such as concepts of birds concepts of drawing concepts of furniture concepts of education these concepts are the outcome of the verbal comprehension primary ability means these concepts and ideas or the words which we are reading listening speaking are the result of the uh, one cognitive component of intelligence that is we known as a verbal comprehension second comes as a numerical abilities the name itself is a sufficient enough to explain what does it mean numerical means numbers the speed and accuracy in numerical and computational skills See, if someone ask you 2 plus 2 multiplied by 2 certainly you are going to answer yes you can think or it yes most people most students when i ask they tell that it's 8 but no it is it is answer, correct answer is 6 as per the board mass so this ability how we can come up to the answer 6 2 plus 2 multiplied by 6 is due to the our numerical ability the individuals who have higher level of numerical ability they are good and produce accurate results as far as numbers and computation is concerned the third come is special relation this is the primary mental ability where students and various uh, individuals find it difficult to understand what special relations means the special relations means special means related to space the ability of visualizing patterns and forms suppose i ask you a question have you seen the dice dice we used to throw or have you seen uh, football now the moment i say football there is a image that comes uh, strike to your mind is a something round and something three dimensional which you wish to keep with different colors that ability means we are able to relate the uh, various points very concept into one object when we we can visualize various patterns various forms you know cube you know triangle so i am shifting from three dimensional to two dimensional so the shifting of this and simultaneously understanding by you this ability you know as special relations means that is under uh, related to space then the fourth ability perceptual speed see there is a group of teachers almost there are seven teachers they are judging a rangoli made by students of a school 
so what they are utilizing the fourth primary mental ability that is perceptual speed speed in perceiving details of object using all five senses here no uh, although here in visualizing this rangoli is only using one sense that is your visual sense but as you know uh, we perceive the objects with the help of our senses because senses transfer the information to your brain to various channels and this information is processed in the brain and subsequently the brain interprets the information and we perceive the object as we love to perceive it that is the only point here that i don't want to say i i am not saying that actually we perceive what an object is we perceive what we want to perceive that this is a very uh, funny thing in the psychology and that is the reason we face various challenges various problems and various issues but this is a separate topic we'll be discussing in the perception topic so perceptual speed you know speed in perceiving details of object using all five senses so next comes your word fluency the ability of using word fluently and flexibly to describe a idea or a situation sometimes you might be observing in my videos also when we speak we use words just suppose i am asking you uh, what the meaning of word you say uh, see that is a sound or uh, means we are trying to recover the meaning of that the moment we come up with the correct meaning of the word we just speak it speak out by that time so those individual who have higher level of word fluency and flexibility is in using interchangeably various words that individual is uh, known to have higher level of the fifth ment primary mental ability such by thurston that is word fluency that word fluency may be in your any language in your mother tongue or any language you learned subsequently so this was the fifth primary mental ability as suggested by the alan thurston and the sixth it's a memory you know what's a memory are yes its memory means you just uh, receiving the information processing the information storing the information and subsequently whenever required when you recalling that information the ability the main point in accuracy in recalling the information we receive a, a big data of information daily it doesn't mean ki we are memorizing everything the ability or accuracy in recalling the information from memory and memorizing capacity is the sixth primary mental ability that is the component of intelligence suggested by the alan thurston and the last one inductive reasoning reasoning or the ability of deriving general rules from presented facts means you are taking small small sentences small subs premises from that you are deriving a general rule it is found in activities that need to discover rules or ideas inherent in a question or series various uh, reasoning questions you come across in various competitive examinations or various books where we uh, use the concept of inductive reasoning inductive reasoning means from small to general rule you mean from specific to general that comes under the concept of inductive reasoning and this is seventh primary mental ability suggested by the alan thurston so let us conclude the thurston theory of intelligence theory suggests that intelligence is not a unitary construct rather it is a combination of seven primary mental capacities or abilities which are found in different individuals with varying degrees these abilities are specific to their function and independent of each other means these abilities are they perform their own function with full accuracy and ability but they relatively they are independent of each other the predominance of one ability makes the individual specific or excellent in the particular you call it as a ability whenever there is a need they come together to work as a integrated group and come out with a unified solution this theory provides provided base for the development of many contemporary theories of intelligence so dear friends this was the thurston theory of intelligence now and will be 
these are my references you can also cross check them and you can study more and finally our next video next video will be dis will discuss on the cattle's theory of intelligence finally dear friends thanks we'll be meet you soon with the next video if you like this video share with your friends and if you would dislike it or something want to say with me you can write in my comment box or you can email me at varmasujit@yahoo.com by that time thank you for watching this video